Hi there YouTube and especially Abdullah. Um, I'm gonna just jump right in here and, and respond to all the questions you raised. Someone owes people something. People did not ask to be created. This is something that you are very very exercised about. Uh, but the problem here is that it assumes a creator and intelligence at the root of the universe and this is unproven. You can't build an argument on a flawed foundation. First you must make the case for a creator. Now, the universe did not create us in the sense that you mean, and I know you sort of picked up on the fact that I said the universe owes us nothing. This is just commonplace anthropomorphism on my part. Humans do it all the time with computers and cars and any number of inanimate objects, including universes. There is no intelligence, no accountability, no justice, or at least all of the evidence of the material world points in the absolutely opposite direction uh, to your contention that there's a god, or that any of these nebulous concepts exist outside of human society. Now, you say that uh, that something has to be done about people who make other people's lives miserable, and I agree. However, only society can enforce whatever norms that we negotiate with each other. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, this is what law is. It's simply stuff that we negotiate and agree on as being the way that we want society to function. And there's compelling reasons for society to function in that way, because a chaotic society wouldn't be cohesive, uh, it, it wouldn't function, uh, those societies have simply passed on, they've, they've, they've disappeared, because the societies that cooperate and are involved with each other and have a baseline of norms that everybody agrees on are the ones that have been successful. Now you were very upset about my idea of that uh, that deferred justice devalues those who have been harmed, and in fact I, I did in fact explain why I felt this in the original video, uh, and I'll explain it again. You don't have the faintest idea. You can't ha you can't have the faintest idea what will happen after death. Thus, for you and those who have been harmed in this world to be happy to defer justice to the next world is at best a wild gamble, and at worst it undermines our efforts to create a just society here, in the only reality we can have any certainty about. This reality we occupy definitively now. All of our efforts have to go to create a just society here. Now there's nothing shallow about this, it's just common sense. Nobody can have the faintest idea what's going on after death to focus on it and to um, convince other people to focus on it is 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 actually unethical i think it's 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 i've i'm gradually coming to the conclusion that it's actually wrong because you're representing something you're saying this thing is true when you can have no certainty at all that it is true now you refer to the quran and islam but i reject these sources of knowledge for a range of reasons one in countries that are run on islamic lines these p people don't appear any happier or content than those that are run under secular systems they do however seem poorer uh, and Islam has had its fair share of religious division, hatred, and strife. So I'm suspicious of religions generally. Uh, uh, and Islam certainly hasn't managed to rise its, raise its head above the mass of religions as being particularly wonderful. You know, I'm left, it leaves me cold. It leaves me completely cold uh, that Islam is this wonderful, amazing way of life. Uh, you know, when people talk like that, it sounds just like every fanatical Christian I've been I've bumped into in my life. And there is nothing compelling about Islam, uh, its adherents or the societal systems Islam has produced. In 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 summary, on the contrary, the secular values of the Enlightenment have produced the most productive, stable, and internally just societies the world has ever seen. That they are cruel and despicable to outgroups like the Arab and Muslim world, agreed. Right, no argument there. But this is merely a technicality. Once you manage to get into the in-group. A veritable avalanche of rights and freedoms assails you. And I want those rights and freedoms to be globally applicable. I want our secular societies uh, to overcome their hypocrisy with regard to people who aren't part of those societies. But when you're in the society, uh, the rights and privileges that uh, accrue to you are beyond anything, anything the human race has ever seen in 6,000 years of recorded history. Now, the other thing is that you that, that, that you guys often say, you've got to check out Islam, and it's like 
Guys, there are over 10,000 active religions. I mean, think about that. 10,000! I'm not going to research all these religions. It's just fucking crazy. If God is such an appalling communicator that he can't make a compelling and attractive case for himself in the 6,000 years of recorded religious history, well, frankly, I just couldn't care. I'm just not interested. God must make his case. Now, most people choose the religion of their geographic region because cultural indoctrination in childhood is so overwhelming. And recently I was chatting to Ninja Girl and she pointed out that those who hear about Islam and reject it will go to hell. And it struck me that at that point that the most responsible thing one could do would be never to mention Islam again. You mention it, I reject it, and hey presto, it's me done. Actually, well done. Literally. And for eternity. Do you really want that on your conscience? You don't think we've made huge ethical progress, and I disagree. I think we've made significant strides in answering the questions of justice, ethics, and morality, and I outlined some of that uh, earlier. About a billion of us have never had it so good, and another two billion are not far behind. And, and this is the awful nihilistic and parasitic nature of religion. It takes everything good that humans have achieved and claims it for God and blames us for everything bad. The truth is we are fully responsible for the good and the bad. We are a conflicted and confused, complex, interlocking system of drives and compulsions and instincts. And out of this emerges the devil and the angel. But it's all just us. You claim science cannot answer these questions. Uh, the questions of morality and ethics and sort of that kind of fuzzy stuff. And yet psychology, neurology and a range of other ologies are making massive inroads into the areas of ethics and morality. Now, perhaps science cannot answer all of these questions. Maybe. What is almost certain, though, is that religion cannot answer them either. Religion has had 6,000 years. Your own pet version has had 14,000 years to make a difference. And what have we got? Regular wars, beheadings, regular burnings at the stake. Yet a mere 300 years of science have given us an unprecedented insight into the natural world and into ourselves. So, let's not give up on it just yet, eh? Religious people contend, and you do this as well, that if there was no God, there would be no morality. And I've heard this so often. I, and uh, there's an implication here that religion has something to offer on this front. But this is obviously an illusion for the whole 6,000 years, blah, 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 that I just mentioned, right? What is the morality that God has given us? Can you get even yourself and a fellow Muslim to agree on a range of complex issues, such as homosexuality, stem cell research, abortion, crime and punishment... I guarantee you that two modestly intelligent people of any religion will quickly disagree on how to approach these complex issues. So what good is your religious bedrock morality now? As every religious person does at this point, you abandon the text and you make it up, just like humans have done since the first two cavemen debated who should get the female with the big breasts instead of kicking the crap out of each other. The bedrock of morality is us, you and me, making it up as we go along. Good chatting to you. You know, you're a decent guy. And this is one of the terrible things about religion. It takes decent people like you and like me and sublimates our decency into this futile channel of religion. And what you should be doing is making a difference for real people in the real world. You know, if you feel concerned, do stuff. You know, something specific, something real, something tangible for a fellow human being. Not for a god. That's what we need to be doing, people like you and I. I'm not arguing about this bullshit, do you know? Anyway.